Test, 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 test. Test, test. You got it? Okay.
invite the congregation to stand as the family enters. Friends, hear the promises of God. God hears the silent grief of our hearts, and God is faithful and will abide in love for us all, even in our sorrows. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And so, friends, And so, friends, we have come together within the strengthening fellowship of friends, family, and of this community of faith to praise God for the life of Bob Reese, to share our grief with God and with one another, to reaffirm our faith in God's unfailing goodness, and to hear again God's promise of resurrection, and to commend Bob to God's everlasting care. Amen. Let us pray. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy for us, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Show compassion to your people. Be our refuge and our strength to lift us from the darkness of this grief to peace and joy in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went through all the land of Egypt. During the seven plenteous years, the earth produced abundantly. He gathered up all the food of the seven years when there was plenty in the land of Egypt and stored up food in the cities. He stored up in every city the food from the fields around it, so that Joseph, so Joseph stored up grain in such abundance, like the sand of the sea, that he stopped measuring it. It was, it was beyond measure. The seven years of plenty that prevailed in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began to come, just as Joseph had said. There was famine in every country, but throughout the land of Egypt there was bread. When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, go to Joseph. What he says to you, do. And since the famine had spread over all the land, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Moreover, all the world came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain, because the famine became severe throughout the world. Please read the psalm responsively as printed in the bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. A reading from the book of the second Corinthians. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly, under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the re renderings of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. The solo selection this afternoon is called A Time for Everything, and this is taken from the famous and much beloved Ecclesiastes text.
I'd invite you to stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. When a great crowd gathered and people from, the to from town after town came to Jesus, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell on the path and it was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew with it, choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said, he called out, let any, anyone with ears to hear listen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We all hope to make a difference with our lives to use the time we are given to good effect, to provide for those we love and leave something behind for which we will be remembered fondly and thankfully. Joseph is such a person, he's a dreamer, who through cleverness and determination and kindness rises to a position in Pharaoh's administration that leaves him responsible for feeding nations. We see him going out in times of plenty, looking ahead to the time of need, and his ability to look ahead in his vision saves the lives of many and provides for those who would otherwise be in want. Some people are blessed with the gift of vision, dreamers who see a way forward through a gift of creativity and whose lives touch many and who provide for others. They're daring. They work hard. Surely Bob was such a soul. He lived through the Depression on a Henry County farm, helping his mama sell eggs and his daddy slaughter hogs, working in the fields. And of course, he learned to shoot. <laughs> okay, I checked this with a family yesterday and they absolutely say it's true. But the story is you could pitch a dime in the air and Bob could hit the dime in the air. Yes? Did anyone else see it besides the family? Okay. Well, there's a few uh, people who tell stretchers over there, I can see. Some people who lived through the hard times of the Depression became stingy, always afraid of losing what they had unwilling to take risks. Others responded by becoming big-hearted, creative, and generous, learning from hard times that if they could make a life and find jo joy in hard times, then they'd be okay anyway, and good times are surely to come later. Bob was optimistic, fun-loving, creative by nature, and he wasn't afraid to try new things or to take big chances. Yeah. We all know that he launched a successful business that provided livelihoods for too many families to count, like the sands of the sea. But the journey of success was not in a straight line. Bob sold farm implements he developed real estate, and he opened an army surplus store. He was a dreamer who got started by buying crates of army surplus, cut through with torches, and then picking through the remains in the barn with his boys, separating out uh, usable parts to build working guns. 
And then, risk-taking visionary that he was, he developed a business plan and bet the family farm on the venture. Wow. To say Bob was a dreamer and a visionary and recognize that through hard work and risk-taking he built a company, though, that's only really part of the story. Bob loved to play. He loved to hunt and fish. He could fix anything. And as his beloved wife, Carol, always said, he was such a sweetheart. My sweet Bob, she always called him. Though he was a great big fellow, he was not imposing, but he set people at ease. He was known for his keen sense of humor, but his joking never came at the expense of others. Though he was a successful businessman, he remained humble. If you were to ask him what he did for a living, he would say, I'm a hog farmer from Henry, Henry County. <laughs> That's so Bob. And when we meet later today to celebrate Bob, I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of fun stories told about creative mischief of various kinds, a legacy of joy growing from his big-hearted openness, his kindness of soul. That's the thing about Bob, really. It's easy enough to see Bob as a modern-day sort of Joseph person in the way that he has a singular vision and creativity through times of plenty and provided for times of want. But his underlying gift and what shaped his soul was a sense of what the Apostle Paul talks about, cheerful generosity with himself, the way he lived his life with us, how he shared himself with us. He didn't share himself because of a sense of compulsion, but out of gladness and because he enjoyed doing it. And the company he built grew from what he loved to do and was good at doing. We could all wish to enjoy doing, uh, having a, uh, a job doing what we enjoy so much and are as good at. Every which way we look at Bob's life and celebrate what he gave to his family and, from, uh, and to the community grows as much from his fun-loving generosity, from his creativity, and from his sense of curiosity and adventure, as it does from the hard work that he earned through choring. It's the thing, after all, about generosity. It provides for us times of want, like today, when our souls are hungry for more, as our souls surely are. For it is then that we find goods, God's good provision. The joy of a life well lived meets us on our own human journey and provides for us and carries us through our days in ways that we can't see ahead of time. So today, as we give Bob back to God, it's our turn to give with cheerful gladness. For we know that God is generous beyond our knowing. We know that God will receive Bob with infinite gladness and with eternal grace and mercy. Amen.
Thank you. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of our hope, we thank you for your word. It is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. We are not a people who hold the past against one another, but a people who forgives as we are forgiven. For we believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. We are sure that neither death nor life nor anything else in all creation can separate us from your love. Though our eyes may be filled with tears, give us vision to see in faith that consolation you intend for us. Though our hearts may be heavy, give us the strength to lift them to you. We are grateful for the many ways you provide for us, and most especially today for, pro for providing for us through the generous soul of Bob Reese, for his fun-loving creativity and cleverness, for that species of courage and risk-taking we know to be the domain of faith, and through faithfulness of souls like Bob, the ways that you provide for many. O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer, we praise you with humble hearts, and in your great mercy and wisdom, we entrust Bob to your eternal care. We praise you for your steadfast love of him all the days of his life. We offer thanksgiving for his life, for the gifts he shared with friends and family, for the way he blessed lives, for his readiness to do what he could do to help those in need. We pray for forgiveness. Forgive us for the ways we failed Bob and forgive Bob the way he failed us. Reconcile us to one another that we may be set free to receive the grace of acceptance and encourage ourselves to love fully and completely. And, O oh God, in tender love and compassion, we pray that you embrace Bob's family. Be their refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Show them again the love of Christ that passes all human understanding. Fill them with the comfort of your spirit and lift them from grief. And God, whose days are without end, whose mercies cannot be counted, awaken us to the shortness and uncertainty of human life that we may live each day as a gift, celebrate each moment as a treasure, and hold one another with care and tenderness. And by your Holy Spirit, lead us in faithfulness all of our days that when we have served you in our time, we may be gathered with those who've gone before, having the testimony of a good conscience, in the communion of your holy church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in comfort of a saving hope, in favor with you, our God, and at perfect peace with the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father,
Let us now commend Bob to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Bob. Accept this child of God, we humbly pray, folding him into your arms of grace, sheltering him in everlasting peace, and welcoming him into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen.